Good afternoon. This is Dee Marie, and I am going to be working with the FOF Creative Icon 2 today and showing you some ways to put words as your background for your fabric, both in sewing and in embroidery. I'm going to focus on sewing so that you can see how the grid works in the projector on the Icon 2. It's a very nifty um, thing, especially when you're writing. So if we're ready, we can go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be changing cameras a couple of times, so bear with me. And right now I'm on the sewing screen and I'm going to go into my sequence creator. And in my sequence creator, I'm going to tap the A for the fonts. And in this instance, I'm gonna use script alphabet number nine, and that brings up my keyboard. And I'm just gonna write a short phrase and it's gonna be holiday, um, twas the night before Christmas. So I'm just gonna write that and show you how that works. Let me make sure I'm spelling it right. Okay, and then I'm going to close my keyboard and you'll see that it says "Twas the night before Christmas. And then I'm going to go into and say, okay. And that'll bring me in so I can edit my stitch if I need to, so I can do my stitch length or um, width or metering. And right now I'm gonna actually go into stitch repeat so that I can repeat it and I'm going to select single stitch program and I'm just going to go ahead and press plus one time so I want it to stitch out twice the length of my fabric should have it twice and if not we can start from the beginning or start where we left off and I'll show you how to do that so now that we're ready we close my stitch creator and I'm going to go in and can you see the machine? Okay. So I'm going to go in and turn yeah. on my projector. And you'll see the grid that I have. And you'll see the words that are going to be sewn in there. And you'll notice I have a couple lines already sewn in just to show you how it works and how I'm going to line it up. Okay. So what I'm doing with the grid is I'm lining it up under the last phrase right on the bottom and then I have my laser on on the grid that I want it to follow so I'm going like every other space and I did um, change my grid spacing and I'll show you that can you go to the other camera thank you there we go so I'll show you my I changed my grid spacing and to minus a uh, 2.39 so that's the spacing I wanted to do every other line you can change that up or down, whichever you'd like, and um, you'll see how the grid gets bigger, okay? I'm gonna put it back to my 39, so that's where I was doing that. And then just close your grid again, and I will go back, not me. <laughs> so I'll go back to the fabric, and we'll try that. And I'm gonna, hopefully the machine's not too loud and you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. So I'm just stitching on the fabric and I'm lightly making sure that it doesn't wander. So I'm following the line under the last repeat. And then I'm just kind of making sure the laser stays on that grid line for me to keep it um, straight. And it's pretty easy to do as long as you don't hold down your fabric. Just guide it so that it doesn't wander. And sometimes it will. But once you get used to it and have practice, you'll be an expert at it. So now if I wanted to stop after the first phrase sequence, I'm, pr press I'm pressing my um, triangle button on the machine and it's going to stop sewing after the first sequence. 
And as you can see, I'm getting a little bit out of line because I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Yeah, so it's at the it's the end of its sequence. So it's gonna stop. I'm just gonna cut the thread. And if I wanted to keep going, it would just um, keep on sewing right along the way. And I don't know if you can see, but the first two lines I um, sewed, they're actually kind of lined up one under the other, and I didn't like the way they were lined up. So um, so evenly so i kind of staggered it the next line and it looks a little bit better in my opinion so and it just do what you feel is right so you can fill up your entire cloth with the background stitching on whatever you want to say you just have to have the patience to type it in and repeat your sequence and it can be as long as you want it to be you'll just stop at the end of your fabric and then go up to the top and either continue with the sequence or press the restart um, sequence key, which is that little triangle uh, right next to the needle down. So Dee Marie, they're asking, did you put stabilizer under your fabric and what kind of stabilizer? Thank you for asking. Yes, I did put stabilizer and I'm using a tearaway stabilizer. Um, you can use an iron on, a light um, iron on. It all depends on what you're gonna be making. So I use a tearaway a lot of times, but I'll also use um, like a lightweight iron-on fusible um, that really works well with embroidery. And it's an interfacing um, rather than a stabilizer. So this one is just a tearaway stabilizer. Good question. Are there any other questions? Not yet. Lots of hellos. Hello from all over Alaska and Minnesota and North Carolina, even from Venezuela today. Wow. Well, welcome. I'm so happy to hear so many people are joining us. And um, so what I also want to show is what I made doing the sequencing. And I also go back to your other camera. Perfect. So I want to show you what I did, yeah. and it's um, you may not be able to see it well in this camera, so I'm going to bring it over to my other camera. Sorry to change up on you so quickly, but this is might be a little bit better picture. You can see the background, and then I just added some embroidery on top of it. So you can do this for birthdays, special occasions. Um, you can change your font size. You just have to make sure you do it in the sewing mode before you start sewing. Um, but let me just get that out there. Sorry, I'm, I'm a camera challenge today, so I apologize. <laughs> um, the other thing you can do if you didn't want to do it in sewing, um, or if you don't have a grid, if you don't have a creative icon too, you can draw your lines. <laughs> You can draw your lines so that it will um, make it easier for you to follow if you don't have the, the fancy creative icon too. But if you don't, you should get one. And the other thing you can do to make it easier, if you wanted to do, you can do this in embroidery mode also. And it's very similar, but it's a bit quicker. So let's go over to embroidery mode. And I'm going to go over to show you this camera over here. So I'm going to touch my sewing machine. I'm going to touch my embroidery. It's going to calibrate my arm for me. So you might hear a little bit of noise. And then I'm going to go into also sequence creator here. And I'm going to go into my stitch fonts and I'm going to do the same alphabet. So I can also write out this again, or I saved it so I can go into my folder and find it. Should have made it a little bit easier. I've been playing a lot in my folders if you can see. Yeah, 
this right here. So it tells me my file cannot be loaded, but it's because I'm in Stitch Creator and not in Embroidery. So I should not have gone through my envelope with Stitch Creator. I should have gotten out of it first. So that is my mistake. And then if I go back into my folder here, I can go back down and find that folder again. And that'll just bring it into our embroidery. And what I did here is I chose my hoop size, which this one happens to be 360 by 260. You can do whatever size you want. And to help me line up my words, I actually went into Applique Creator. And I'm going to go in here and touch that. And touch Applique Creator. I went into Basics. And I chose a box. And then I'm going to close that. And then I went into my Edit the Applique. And... I'm doing the size of my box. I'm in inches. I don't know if you can tell, but sometimes I go in millimeters and sometimes inches. But this is a box I want 10 inches. So I'm just going to put in 10 and OK. And that way it tells me where my words can be. I'm not going to applique. So before I embroider it out, I'm going to delete that applique. And then I just use it as a reference on how much space I have to applique or to um, do my applique and my embroidery and I hope that makes sense. So, um, but that's how I do it. And then you can just do okay. And I'm gonna just get rid of my design and I started to go into Sequence Creator and I got sidetracked, sorry. And so I could go in here, Sequence Creator, Oops. go into my letters and start typing again. I don't want capitals. And I want to show you that you can um, rotate this. That's the reason I'm doing this. So I'm going to do that. And then we'll, I'm going to hit OK, tap OK. And you'll see it's that um, vertical. So I want it to be horizontal. And I'm going to edit my design. And I'm going to touch the rotate. And I'm going to touch it three times so it'll be going the correct way. And I could move it up there. And then what I can do is go in and multiply it. So if I wanted to have them side by side, I can do that. And then if I want to do more lines, I can line it up like that. And if I need a straight line, I can turn my grid on on the screen. And all you have to do is go into Hoop Options select grid and I have mine at 0.50 and hit OK and then so now I can line up my lines with the grid and it makes it a little bit easier when you're um, embroidering so that you can fix your lines and you'll have your box there. Um, I hope that makes sense. So Marie, the question was the box that you created in applique, right? Yes. What um, they were asking is the box the size of the hoop? No, no, the box is the size that we want to embroider, keep the embroidery in. And um, I selected the hoop size so I wouldn't go outside of the hoop. So I can make it the same size as the hoop or smaller. I chose to make it a little bit smaller. That hoop size that I chose was 360 by 260 which is, um, I think it's 14 inches, is it? By maybe 10. But I, I just wanted to keep it um, maybe the size of a pillow that I'm making. So I don't want to make it 
too terribly big. So really what you're saying is the, the applique and, and I hope um, that they can hear me over the top, but they're saying, you're saying the applique box is the size you want your letters to be, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so what I'm saying is um, somebody asked me why I use the box and it's not the size of the hoop, but it's the size I want to keep my lettering in for my embroidery um, because I've already determined I have a pillow a certain size uh, or whatever I'm making. And I want the embroidery background to stay in that 10 by 10 area and not get confused with, you know, going too big. And then I didn't embroider too much or I didn't embroider enough. So that's just a guideline is what it is. It's just, they might want to see you. Yeah. So it is just a guideline and um, it's, it's just very helpful to me. I know you don't have to do that. It's, it's totally optional, but it does help you when you're embroidering out. And then when you um, see your layers, if that's in there, you can just highlight it in your layers area and go into options and delete it if you needed to. Um, I just deleted the line, but that's one of your options before you study your it. other camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting used to that. It is. Sorry. Okay. So you can go into your layers and right here, you'll see my two lines that I've, um, selected but if there was a embroidery box an uh, applique box rather i would it would be down here and i'd be able to select it go into my options and i could delete it at that i just deleted the line which is fine and then that's how um i take care of not stitching out that applique creator the applique box unless you're doing an applique and you want the box to be done like that. That's totally up to you, but I just use it as a reference. And, and, and we have another good question, B. Marie. So the question was, if you have a longer sentence or want to do multiple sentences, can you create that on the computer and then bring it in? Yes, you can. Absolutely. And in my Sonet, you can do that. Um, and it can go directly to your Wi-Fi enabled machine, which is really easy to do because I'm a 10 finger typer and it's easier for me to type it in a computer, but I wanted to show you how to do it in the sewing machine because it's very easy to do in there also. Good question. And what else was that? So other than the embroidery, we went over the hoop grid. Um, I like this when I, I like that it's easy to turn on and off and either through hoop options or you can just do a long hold on the screen and you can do grid on and off there. And that's nice and easy. So you can just save yourself a button. And I think that was, oh, the other thing I'm going to show you is how to save it. So you always um, may want to save your sentences, either your embroidery or your stitching. And it's the same process for both sewing and embroidery. You're going to touch the solid heart down in the lower left. And then you're going to name your design as just holiday or whatever you want to name it and then just save it or you can save it under a folder so it's very easy and then you can just touch your folder and bring it up again obviously i need to organize my folders so but that's how you do it <laughs> and are there any other questions well Donna asked a question, D. Marie. She said, I'm trying to make this full screen. Is it possible? Donna, are you talking about uh, the, the, the live or are you talking about it on your machine, I guess? Oh, there we go. And, you know, there we go. Um, we just, 
I'm sure Amy just answered about uh, click on the video on Facebook will become full screen. I think that's what she's asking okay. about. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Yeah. That that's excellent. And um, I know it's a little bit of a short time today, so I was hoping there'd be some questions that I can answer. Doesn't have to be about the lettering or the sequencing, but I'd be happy to um, answer any questions or show you some. I think you should show some of your samples, Dee Marie, because okay. they're really cute. Okay. This one I have, and I gotta. I guess I'm gonna just kind of stand up. So this is a ribbon embroidery, and I made a little bag out of it in little corners, and then um, put the handles on it. <laughs> and then I also just made the back just a different design. So that's in Shape Creator. So I did the ribbon embroidery on one side, and then the Shape Creator on the other side, so that it just I have a two for one type of bag. And then I also have a bag that I made through um, a design on the FOF Icon 2. And it's a class I took with our ambassador, um, Nadine Connect, and she showed us how to do this. So I made a little bag for that. And that was lots of fun. So if you are familiar with her, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I've also made a coaster and you can embroider on the rope. I'm not sure if you knew that. So you can, um, this is just a rope coaster. We make rope bowls and it's over in the corner and I can show you that. Actually a rope bag, not a rope bowl. So it's um, the bottom is rope and then the other is bag. We did a lot of embroidery on the bag. This is a project that we have when we go to events and um, people find it a lot of fun and you can just keep whatever you need to in there. It's just, it's very easy to do and simple. Then I have some stand-up lace or standalone lace, and it's just a pumpkin, and I did two things. It does take a lot of thread, but the fun of it is you can make it whatever color you want. You can have an orange or a purple pumpkin, and then I have some. Well, you now have two questions, Dee Marie. Okay. So, the first thing, the first question is, they are um, wondering if you would go back through, so change to the, the camera over there and go back through step by step, right at the beginning and take them through uh, creating a sequence. In sewing? In sewing. All, All right. right. I can so, do that. So just step by step. Okay. So first of all, of course, you select your sewing. And it's going to ask me if I want to cancel my ongoing work. And I said yes. So your menus are down the bottom. And I'm choosing Sequence Creator. And when that comes up, I'll have, I've already selected the A for fonts. So it was already loaded on my machine. And now I'm going to select the number, uh, the last one in the bottom, Script Alphabet. So now you type in your sentence, and it defaults, by the way, to caps. Um, so you have to actually turn off the caps when you want to go to lowercase. So, and then you just type out what you want. And then your space. And I won't type the whole thing for you, but you'll get the idea. So it goes down. And when I'm finished, I close my keyboard. And then if I'm finished with my sequence, I say, okay. If I want to put a stitch in there, I can do that if I needed to. If I wanted to put a little design, but today we're not going there. Um, so then you just press okay. It'll bring me into sewing. And then I can edit that stitch. And by editing it, I can go into stitch repeat. If I wanted to keep repeating that, I can do it as many times as I want. I'll select single stitch program. And then to the right, it asks me how many repetitions I would like. Maybe I want three. Maybe I have a large piece of fabric I want to sew this phrase on. And just remember that you can sew it until the end of the fabric. Uh, it runs out. And then you can start your phrase over again by touching the repeat on your, um, the 
front of your machine. Or you can um, just continue the sentence and where it ends Christmas, you can just go, it'll start again for you. And then when you finish that, you just touch your stitch repeat, your stitch edit. It's um, now ready to sew. And then I'll bring it to this camera over here and I'm turning on my grid. And I've already preset it from before. So then I can do, and I'm just using the stop and go button. You can use your um, foot pedal if you like, but with sentin sentences like this from me, it's easier to use the stop and go button because then I can concentrate on lining my lines up with my stitches. Does that help? Yeah. And then we have another question about any, um, I'm gonna, the, there was someone that asked about tips and tricks for um, applique creator, but lots of questions on the rope as well. So I don't know which one you, which, which ones you wanna ask, answer first, Dee Marie. I can do applique creator tips. Okay. So I'm going to go back into my Up embroidery. One. Did I get the right? Oh, no, got the wrong one. There we go. So I'm going into my embroidery. I'm going to go ahead and delete my ongoing work. And then applique creators down the bottom right hand side. So you just choose that. And then there's a star and a circle. And that's also applique, applique creator. Can they see? Yeah, you can see that. And then I chose basic and I chose a square. And then if I wanted to um, change the outside of the, from satin to another stitch, if that's maybe what you're asking, if you go right under the A, there's a stitch dialogue, and there's um, 20 different applique stitches that you can use. You can do hearts, you can do that, um, more hearts, some dots. So you get an idea of what you can do with them. And then if you don't want any of those outside the applique stitch, you can actually delete it. And you just, and now you only have your, your first two stitches. You have your placement stitch and you have your tack down stitch. So if that's if you want a raw, raw edge applique, it works really good for that. Or again, if you wanted to put another stitch on there, the satin back on there, you can put that back on there if you did it by mistake. And then the other thing I did is I set the size and I'm in inches. Again, like I'll show you, I went into my settings. I went into my machine and here's my units. If I touch that, I can go back into a millimeter or I can stay in inches. So I'm gonna stay in inches because just for a box, it's a little bit easier um, to go in inches. And then I have, let me just show you, I have this center padlock locked. Now, if it was unlocked, I, maybe I want this um, five by seven, so I can put five and then touch my eight and put a seven. So if I wanted a different size box, and the other thing you can do if, um, with Applique Creator, you can go into positioning, you can go into your control points, then you can change the shape of your box. So if you didn't want a rectangle and you wanted something with a little more character, you could do that. Then you get out of your control points and you say, okay. And then it brings you back into uh, Embroidery Edit. And now you have I don't know what that's called. A figure eight box. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice if you're doing, if you're designing for different things, maybe you're making some um, special mug rug mats or whatever, or you can just kind of go with the shape and play with it. Do you think, Dee Marie, that there's a way to change a circle into a pumpkin shape? Yes, there is. Let me show you. So all I have to do is go back into my applique creator. And go here and then touch my basics and I'm gonna to touch my circle. So it changed my um, rectangle 
into a circle. And so I'm gonna change that. And then I'm gonna go back into positioning. And this is where I can change the shape of my circle. Um, you wanna just play with these, these points and see, I don't know if that's, that looks more like a peanut, but there's, a, can bring it in. These red squares are your points, so you can, if you want a short pumpkin, you can do it that way. I'm not a good artist, so hopefully that's something, but you can change the circle um, to whatever you want. That looks like a potato, so <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can change it by using your control points. And when you're finished with the control points, with finished mashing it around, just make sure you choose the um, first control point again, and then um, go back to editing or wherever you want to go. Okay, and then you can press okay, and there's your new shape. That's great. So a couple questions about the rope. Marie. So oh, yeah. let's switch off oh, on okay. that for a moment because there are lots of questions saying, you know, are there special considerations for the rope? Like how thick of rope did you use and what needle size did you use when you embroidered? I use a cotton rope and this is, looks like, I think it was a, like a quarter inch. I got it at a hardware store and just make sure you don't get the nylon because you don't want to have a coaster made out of nylon. It's not going to absorb anything. And the um, rope for the little basket bottom or the bag bottom was maybe a little bit bigger. But the, the needle size, or you can use a denim needle, and that makes it really nice to penetrate. But you can also use um, any kind of, like, really just a regular needle, a uh, universal needle, and that'll be fine. It depends on the thread you're using. And I just use um, my regular cotton thread on this. And I go into my zigzag. And there I go. So I just go into sewing. And I go into my stitches and I used a number six and then I test it on, um, let me see if I can, I test it on the width of the rope. So I get my zigzag set on, on the, you want it to go from one side of the rope to the other rope. So it kind of goes in the middle back and forth and you just keep turning it. And just keep turning it when you're going around. So the one thing that you need to do when you're doing a bowl is once you get your platform, like say it's flat like this, once you want to start turning it, then you bring it up to the side of your machine and you just do it that way. And your rope should always be on the right hand side. All right. Okay. And then for the embroidery. Mm -hmm. You know, that should you slow your speed down when you're uh, working with the rope embroidery? And what about density of the designs, actually? Absolutely slow it down because you don't want, it'll just get crazy if you go too fast. And the density, I like to use a sketch stitch or just, this is just something, I don't have a lot of density in this. If it was a dense um, stitch, it doesn't embroider well on the rope because it's all too thick. There's just too much thread going through and um, it doesn't like it. <laughs> and it. It's not that it can't do it, but then the bobbing gets all confused and um, it's so it not super nice. dense, not right. super. Dense. Right. All right. right. And the last thing is about this. Um, when you did your embroidery and put your rope down, yes. um, what stabilizer did you use to hold that in the hoop? I used a tearaway again. And so, oh, for this. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sticky. I had used a sticky back um, tearaway. So I got a hoop. I had several coasters in it. I got a big hoop and I put as many coasters as I could. 
And then I used my precise positioning on the machine. Then I was able to go in and embroider where I wanted to on my coasters. So there was uh, now another question about a different sample, Dee Marie. Okay. And that was about your little stand up, st um, standalone lace pumpkin over there. Okay. And they were asking what stabilizer you use for that because basically they've used some stabilizers and it didn't wash out as nicely as that. So what stabilizer did you use? I use in Spira um, Aqu Aqua Magic and I used um, two layers of it. And you do have to kind of soak it. And I picked up a tip that if you want it to really lay flat, you can use that plastic canvas and like sew up two sides, put your um, product inside and put it in the water. So it makes it lay flat when it's drying because you do have to watch it when you're drying. It can curl and um, the plastic uh, little envelope, I guess you could call it, helps a lot. And the other thing that helps if you want a little more stability on the thread is to put some organza underneath. So you're gonna put your stabilizer down, your aqua magic, then you're gonna put your um, organza down and then you'll stitch out. And it makes a really pretty and nicely, um, nice stitches on the pumpkin or whatever standalone lace objects you want. And the, the last question, Dee Marie, that we have uh, right now is, on your screen, on your Creative Icon 2, they ask, can you change your, um, like the, the thread brand in embroidery? Yes, in embroidery you can. And let me go back to embroidery. It's coming. And it, and it just takes a minute. Yeah. So you go into your palette. And just bring in a design first, oh, I think. Okay. We'll help you out with that. So I'll do that. Thank you. I'm just going to bring this one in because it's nice and big. I'm going to try another one. Yeah. And it doesn't matter which one. Okay. I would just choose any design. Let's just try this flower yeah. right here. All right. And then I go into my palette. And right now I'm in Robus and Anton. So if I wanted to change that, I go Look into down. my Look, yep. change color. Yep. Sorry. I touch the color of orange and then I go into change color. And bottom left. Yeah. Right here where it says Robus and Anton, then I can do this arrow right here. And you'll see that it has signature, it has sulky, it has every brand. So you can choose um, whichever type of thread you want to use um, and just select the color there. And they were asking specifically about Floriani. Okay, let's see if we have Floriani. I'm sure we do. Let's see. They're in alphabetical order. So let's just go right back up the top. There it is. Not a lot on Floriani. Um, looks like they have some poly. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of colors there. Yeah, they do have the brands, I'm sorry. Yeah. And um, the poly neon, if you wanted to do that. And then there's the premium. So once you choose whichever one you want, then you go in and select the color. Great. The only thing is you cannot change your thread brand in the machine um, permanently. Is that right? So like it defaults to Robus and Anton all the time. It, Can you change the default on it? Sorry, I'm asking a question myself. Yeah, no, the question that DeMarie asked that I'm sure some of you may also have is when you bring in a design, it comes up with the thread colors that it was actually uh, created under. So um, most of our designs are created as 
with Robus and Anton Thread. So. Okay. Does that make sense? And I, yeah. I just didn't verbalize it correctly. Yeah. So whatever your design comes in at, that is the thread that it we will default to. And there's another question about, she, Roxanne asked, I've read that the Creative Icon 2 is embroidering about half an inch to one side, not centered as expected. I've, I I've, saw that today on in Facebook, and yeah. I don't have an answer for you. I have not seen that at all. They're saying that the projector, when you um, use it to locate where you want to um, put your embroidery, it's being off. And then there was a comment that said it had to do with the last update. I don't know if that's true or not. So okay. I will look into that, yeah. Roxanne. And I would just make sure that you have calibrated also your projector as well mm -hmm. but let we will look into that thank you for that question mm -hmm. okay i think that's all the questions so far all right and then what else can i answer for you are there any other questions or anything of this sort guys and if you have any afterwards, I'll be checking um, the, my Facebook and I'll be able to answer any questions that you have if you think of something later. And everyone, I, I know this is hard for Marie to see, so I'm talking in the background. I hope you can hear me. But the next My SoNet Live is Wednesday, November 9th at 2 p.m. Central with Nancy Bronstein, who will be showing uh, the creative ways to use the Spyro Wizard. So that's the My Sonet Live. That's so that'll be fun. Awesome. And then the next Foth Facebook Live is Thursday, November 17th at 2 uh, with Karen Charles. Oh. So she's going to be making cards and gift tags. So oh, gosh. That's, that's all kinds of fun that we're bringing you. And I want to, I forgot to thank my support staff here. Thank you very much to Amy and Meredith and Ryan. And of course, Sonny today, I couldn't have done it without all of you. And thank you very much for joining me today. All right. And there, there were a couple other little questions that yeah. just came in. Sure. Um, one is about voice activation. I think that maybe we should do that um, in a, a separate. Yeah, as okay. a separate thing. And then the table runner to your right um, did you do the piping? And so um, it's actually that one, Marianne, I think. It's a project uh, that we do for events. And yes, we did the piping. We, I didn't make the piping. It's a store-bought piping. And um, we just use a different method for actually adding the piping rather than the normal right sides together. And so the piping in between, we use a different techniques. So if we're in the area with that particular event, um, please join us. It's a lot, it was a lot of fun. Is that? I think that's okay. It. So I 